Welcome to Cargo Film Presents. I'm Dan. And I'm Dave. And at Cargo Film Presents, we discuss uh, latest documentary films, news, and trends. And today we're going to be talking about Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb, um, which is a documentary that takes us on a journey with a team of Egyptian archaeologists as they excavate the Saqqara Tomb, a never before explored burial site. Um, the film focuses on um, this team as they decipher this 4,500 year old tomb of Huati. Um, who was an Egyptian high priest, uh, as well as the team's attempts to secure funding from the government for the next season. So uh, what did you think about the secrets of Sakara tomb? Wati, don't you like saying that name after I, I heard that. it a few times? Yeah, it sounds like, I don't know, some uh, war chant or something. Um, yeah, you know, I was a little surprised at first when you offered uh, this up as, as uh, kind of a film for us to... Uh, uh, discuss only because it's a bit of a kind of a throwback doc wise, you know, it's a kind of film uh, documentary that uh, we would have seen. Uh, I would have seen grown up, so, or, you know, on BBC or PBS um, and, and pub public broadcasters uh, around the world and uh, around the world. And, and uh, they've been making films like this for a, a very long time. Um, you know, it follows this archeological dig and, and, and you see what happens and uh, and so I was curious, you know, why, why did you pick this? But then I got to the scene of all the mummified cats <laughs> that they found in one of the tombs. And I was like, okay, now I get it. That's why Dan wanted, wanted me to check this film out. He fell in love with these mummified cats. Um, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that was a, a pretty nice uh, scene. Uh, uh, it was also kind of funny because of the guy, the, 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 the the guy in the crew that uh, discovered the mummified cats uh, on that dig, you know, says that when uh, he got home, uh, he, his, his cats avoided him because they almost uh, suspected that he had been surrounded by uh, hundreds of, of dead cats uh, on, on, uh, at his, uh, at his uh, day job. Yeah, you got me. That's was probably my, my secret hidden reason, but I <laughs> also thought that it was, I, you know, this was, um, this week, obviously, with the with the election underway, so I was also looking for a documentary that got us a far as far away as possible from the present day conversation and things happening. So I was like, yeah, let's go back in you know time four thousand five thousand years back to uh, you know the time of the pharaohs and ancient Egypt and um, and I hadn't heard of the fi the film at all. I was just you know scrolling on Netflix and saw it and said, oh yeah, this would be this sounds like a a good escape and. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's in, in, in a way it is a throwback, um, but it's also, I, I, I thought that, you know, it's not your kind of typical um, ancient history documentary with, mm -hmm. you know, these kinds of dr dramatic reenact reenactments and, you know, voice of God uh, narration type of things, that, which I suspect maybe are what's more, you know, in, in, uh, in, in vogue these days, although I yeah. probably shouldn't criticize, I haven't seen that, that many, but I, I did find this, yeah, really enjoyable that I was just kind of quietly observing these um, Egyptian archaeologists as they kind of very, very diligently and, and determined, you know, in, a, in their determination to excavate these sites. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, um, you know, I guess they update the genre, this, this subgenre a little bit. Um, you know, uh, first off, of course, there's this all Egyptian crew being filmed. Usually these digs uh, in the past, you know, would because they're being financed by, um, you know, or co-financed by the Egyptian government and some other, uh, you know, European government or some institution in America and, and, and so on. It, it, often it's a European or an American uh, that acts as, uh, as, as your guide uh, through these films and, 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 the, and, and the, the Egyptians aren't represented. Uh, but, but that's different here and, and it's important, right? And it's refreshing, of course. Uh, you, you know, everybody seems like, uh, I recall everybody uh, interviewed um, was, was uh, uh, Egyptian and, and you can tell that the whole kind of expedition and uh, the experience of this dig, you know, means so much to uh, Egyptian crew members, um, you know, who have this connection to to their past and and you know their their ancestors. Yeah, that's really what what I what I found unique um, about this 
doc uh, as well just the emotional connection that the team has mm -hmm. the archaeologists um i think there's archaeozoologists the um team members who decipher um the the hieroglyphics in, in wati's tomb mm -hmm. i mean it's not just about you know a dig and an excavation it's also about the you know emotional connections that they have i mean these are people who are essentially um excavating and deciphering their ancestry you know which is mm -hmm. kind of cool a really nice element to it and occasionally some of the crew members get sort of tearful um you know and you see the joy that's expressed when they do find something new which was super cool i mean you just imagine i don't know these excavations ongoing and just you know a sort of routine but just the kind of giddiness of some of these diggers um was was pretty cool and and also to see i mean just the um, the painstaking care that those diggers take, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of generational. I think one of the diggers, um, I'll probably get it, Garib, I think was his name probably. Incorrect. Right. But yeah, he talks about, you know, um, his father was a digger and he brings his, I think his son or his grandson along to show, to show him the ropes um, of, of excavating and digging and the tools they use, which are, you know, to us, I suppose we think very, very primitive the way in which they're digging, but you know, the, just the care and, um, uh, that they take doing this is is uh, was pretty remarkable. I really enjoyed that in in its in its kind of very quiet, but I th I thought kind of powerful way. Yeah, and certainly this site uh, was a site that just uh, kept on giving, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it was. Um, it turns out that uh, it's one of the most significant archaeological finds uh, of the century. And yeah, to, uh, you know, uh, it had, you had archeologists and anthropologists, doctors, Egyptologists, uh, and, and the, uh, these very diligent and careful, uh, diggers. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 these hieroglyphics, they, uh, kind of identified this man named White, uh, Wati, um, who served uh, this, uh, let's see here, this King uh, Nefer, Nefer Kare of, of the uh, kingdom's fifth dynasty. And uh, it ruled, they ruled from uh, you know, 2500 to 2350 BC. And um, you know, apparently they, I think they end up deciphering that uh, Wahati is, um, you know, was a, a uh, uh, a very privileged person in, att attached to the the um, the royal um, the entourage. There was a um, I think they discovered that he was a royal purification priest. If you know what any of these things are, just, just let me clue. know. Royal royal supervisor. <laughs> that one, yeah, I guess you can figure out. You know, and uh, inspector of the sacred sacred boat. That's pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, amongst other things, so. Um, that's that guy yeah yeah he was definitely part of the in crowd yeah. let's face it you know uh yeah you can imagine him you know going home to his friends and gossiping about everything he'd seen about the royal family you know during <laughs> the day and that kind of thing right uh so so very 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 close to to the the elite and the in the uh power um and uh Saqqara, just a place for people is a city south of of cairo and it, it was a, um, basically a, a, a vast um, cemetery, right? Uh, close to the ancient city of Memphis, uh, which was the capital of Egypt uh, in, in the um, old kingdom, as they call it. Yeah, this uh, Bubastion necropolis, I, I guess. Yeah, it's a, a massive burial, burial site there. And one of the... Um, one of the archaeologists says, you know, we, we wake up every day and go from the land of the living into the land of the dead, which uh, I thought right. was a really apt description of, of his work. What did you think of the um, race against the clock narrative in this? Uh, obviously, part of the film is about kind of deciphering the mystery of Wati and his tomb and what happened to him. And then the other part is, you know, the team also has to make a new discovery within six weeks, I think, before Ramadan, before their funding gets, uh, their funding runs out. And if they don't discover something significant, then the, the, the site will be, that will at least their work will be shut down. So I wonder what you thought about that. It seemed uh, a tad too deliberate in my uh, view. And uh, I wondered whether the uh, uh, documentary filmmakers kind of um, heightened that a little bit to, to have this kind of race against the clock 
but but who knows? Uh, but it 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 I didn't need that that element uh, to be honest. I mean, it, it was just uh, um, it was fun to watch them, um, you know, uh, digging and finding things so frequently that I, I don't I don't think they. Uh, uh, necessarily needed that, but uh, but maybe maybe it is accurate and and uh, it, it it was you know proceeded as as it indicated. How about you? Same, yeah. I thought it was it wasn't necessary. It was a little too much, and I just found myself going every you know 10, 15 minutes when they made some new significant discovery. Like just give what, just give these guys the funding. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> what are we waiting every time? Come on, I was, I was getting well, quite annoyed. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, hence is why you know the Egyptian government often uh, cooperates with foreign institutions and governments for these digs. It must be bloody expensive, and and you know it's it's tough for them to uh, sell finance. I think. Uh, you know that that was one of the nice things about this dig was was that it was uh, self funded and and they they certainly got a lot of attention uh, in in the world media when these um, you know these 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 finds were were uh, being uh, you know being circulated and uh, and so it brought it brought them a lot of a lot of attention now uh, how much revenue that that brings them uh, remains to be seen I'm sure they're going to try to you know uh, find a way to to, to uh, generate some revenue for, um, you know, seeing these just amazingly, uh, almost, uh, you know, uh, perfectly um, um, uh, captured um, uh, tombs, you know, that, that have vibrant color and, and, and don't look like they're several thousand years old. No, and I think I was mentioning to you uh, this week that there was a well, obviously, you know, it's, it's social media, but people were, were the way they thought this was, this was faked, you know, these couldn't be, have be real right. relics, you know, just because the how well they were preserved and, the, you know, just the stunning beauty of them. Um, people were saying, oh, this has got to be, you know, this is fake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, sorry, folks, it's, it's real. Um, it, it is real. And you know what, you know, you say anything today, today online, you're, you're going to be accused of, of making it up anyhow. So. What it's did you think the, of um, the uh, Wati the Wati controversy around his his brother? So they do discover who he is um, in, in being a, a, a high priest. Um, yeah. But then there is some controversy, which which is not exactly resolved in the in the, in the story. Correct. That, that's exactly what I was going to say. Go ahead. Yeah. But whether the, he had stolen, perhaps stolen the uh, the tomb, right. um, and uh, the, yeah. the nature of the. Um, the fact the contradiction between how lavish the tomb was, I think one of the um, hieroglyphic translators, you know, considers him quite quite the egoist Wati. But then they, you know, when they find his uh, coffin, it's a very simple wooden coffin. So there was this quite a, a discrepancy between the nature of his his burial and and the kind of lavishness and extravagance of his tomb, uh, which was interesting. I thought, and they were obviously speculating about about this in the film. Correct. And as you said, they did not resolve that. Uh, intriguing speculation. I thought, hey, family drama. Uh, I was I was hooked, but but they kind of leave you hanging, don't they? And, they do. and uh, I, I suppose there were, there were a couple of instances that I, I felt like that. There was also a um, this beautiful sarcophagus that they um, discovered and, and brought out and they lifted the lid. And you see this body wrapped in in, in linens uh, that they used to mummify corpses for the uh, prepare them for the afterlife, but you never find anything out about that mummy. You know they they never return to it, and uh, you know I, I I I don't know I I I thought that they might unwrap uh, the mummy, you know, and maybe somehow recreate the person's uh, likeness using some computer rendering software technology. Uh, you know, same with the animals that they found, you know, they, they were never unwrapped. And, uh, and I just was thinking, Oh, I don't know, did, didn't they unwrap these things? There's a reason why they didn't unwrap them. Um, uh, do you have any insight? I don't, I mean, I wonder if it's, um, you know, now with computer imaging, like they just do these the scans of mm -hmm. the, um, uh, mummies or the, the scans of the mummified uh, lion cubs and, and cats that they discovered and maybe like they don't need to or I don't know and that's enough they can look at the right but they didn't they didn't even do that I mean we didn't get any um, you know you'd think if you were part of that film crew and and they actually took that ne next step to uh, digitally render 
these uh, mummified remains that that you would see, wait for for that because you know people like us would would love to see what YT and his wife and children you know uh, look like who are in the tomb. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe maybe one of our uh, watchers or listeners can weigh yeah. in. Yeah. I'd love to hear what you think about that. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, anything else? Um, you know, uh, let's see. No. Uh, no. I mean, okay. I got nothing else. I mean, I just thought All it was right. you know, super, super cool, these discoveries. You know, cat cult centers. You know, if we're going to have cults in this in this country in this world, you know, why not? Why not to cats? Right. Well, if you're going to do cats, might as well do dogs too. All right, fine. Yeah, we can we can extend it to other parts of the animal kingdom that uh, that we love. So thanks for uh, for for uh, listening and uh, check it out if you want something to uh, to transport you to to ancient times. It, it'll it'll do the trick. Yep. Stop refreshing your your Twitter or your newsfeed and go, go go watch a documentary on on ancient Egypt. 